Portable extinguishers can be separated into five different groups or classes. Um, class A fires are going to be your ordinary combustibles, which include wood, paper, cloth. Class B are going to be flammable liquids that include gasoline, paints, oil, and grease. Um, class C is going to be your live electrical equipment, electrical wiring, fuse box. Um, class D is going to be combustible metal, which include magnesium, sodium, aluminum, and titanium. And Class K fire extinguishers uh, are going to cover your kitchen fires, such as cooking oils and grease. The extinguisher rating system. Um, class A and Class B rated fire extinguishers use numbers to show how large of a fire they can fight. The higher the number means the extinguisher can battle a bigger blaze. A fire extinguisher with a 1A rating is equivalent to 1.25 gallons of water. A 2A rating equals 2.5 gallons of water. And a 4A rating equals 5 gallons of water. For B rated fire extinguishers, the numbers are in 10 square feet. An extinguisher with a 10B rating can cover roughly 10 square feet. And an extinguisher with a 20B rating can cover 20 square feet. According to the NFPA, a fire extinguisher should be located on every floor of the home. Uh, the first location should be the kitchen, where 50% of fires originate from, and should be located near the door or entrance and away from the stove or oven. Second location is going to be the master bedroom, since uh, most fires occur over at night. Easy access in case of an emergency. Third location is going to be in the garage, if accessible. Um, other locations would be the hallway, um, outside of any room with a fireplace, HV unit, um, and if, a basement if you have one. To um, fire extinguisher uh, operation and use, uh, this term used is called PASS. It's just pretty simple. Um, it stands for pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. Pull the pin. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, squeeze the trigger, and sweep side to side. For fire extinguisher maintenance testing, um, there are six steps. Um, step one is ensure easy access. Um, place an extinguisher outside of rooms containing furnaces, HVAC systems, and water heaters around fireplaces, uh, in the kitchen, in the garage, and outside near the grill or outdoor kitchen. If you have an extinguisher in the garage or outside, make sure that it is rated for cold temperatures. Step two is to check fire extinguisher inspection tag. Um, if one is not provided at the neck of the fire extinguisher, you can use a bread tie and a piece of paper just to write down the date and any notes. Um, make sure that it is inspected Periodically, usually about a month to a year, um, just to make sure that it is operational and functional and there are no damages. Step three is check the pressure. At the neck of the extinguisher is a gauge that is red with a silver uh, sliver of green, and that is called the charge zone, as you can see right here. And right here on the neck is the green. Make sure that the needle is in the green area. Um, to ensure that it is charged and ready to go. And oh, an overcharged extinguisher could be a explosion risk and an undercharged extinguisher may not be able to emit enough fire retardant to extinguish a fire. Step four is to confirm the hose and pin are in place. Check the hose for any crack or brittleness. If any damage is found on the hose, make sure that it is replaced and ensure the pin is secured to prevent accidental activation. If the pin is missing, more than likely the fire extinguisher may have been used and needs to be replaced. Step five is look for physical damage. Look for dents, scratches, or divots on the canister. Um, these can be signs that there might be a leak in your fire extinguisher and may not function in an emergency if it is needed. Look for rust around the seal of the canister and the neck for possible leakage concerns. 
and step six is to update the inspection tag. And that is it for portable extinguishers. Thank you for your time.